Well, motherfuckers, the first half of the year is over, which means it is time, of course, for the the flood of lists for the top ten albums, EPs, artists, jizz moppers of the first half of 2013. Uh, so Daryl here, I'm going to go through my list from number ten down to number one uh, this week. And you can obviously look at Brian's list as well, which I'll, I'll touch on, but I don't want to speak for Brian. Um, but he's got his list up there as well, and we share zero in common, which uh, tends to be the way it is. So let's jump right into it here, guys. Uh, number 10 for me for the first half of 2013 was the new Cult of Luna album, Vertical. Uh, and there were a lot, of, a lot of reasons for that. Uh, the concept of the album uh, blew me away. So, you know, it's a, it's a futuristic city, divided, and just the storyline alone would have been enough. But the fact that they somehow combined all of these different elements in, I mean, with the special effects, with, I mean, just the sound itself, it, it's a very interesting combination of styles and sounds. Uh, so, Vertical, really, for me, was the first Cult of Luna album that I was stuck on for weeks. I've been a fan of theirs for a while, but this album was just... It wasn't a complete departure, but a, a great evolution. And if you haven't listened to it by now, you should probably get on that. I mean, it came out towards the beginning of the year, so the fact that it's on this list says a lot. But uh, if you want to you know, check out one or two tracks, definitely uh, you can check out The Sweep or even Synchronicity. And those two back-to-back -back are just fantastic. They say so much about, about how much thought and planning went into this album. Uh, so that would be number 10, Cult of Luna, Vertical. Uh, without further delay here, jump right into number 9. And this was a band that I had never heard of before. It's their, I guess, their first real album. And it's a melodic death metal band from Finland called Sons of Aeon. And it is their self-titled album. Uh, this album blew me away. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned numerous times that the melodic death metal realm uh, gets crowded at times and gets very barren at times and you have you know the times where it's barren sometimes it can get really really bad it can get uh just boring plain and you have to go back to your old faithful so i mean insomnium is always there they're always going to be around uh bands like that but when a new band comes out and they do something that's impressive even if it's along the same lines you know, it, it kind of reinvigorates you, and that's what Sons of Aeon did here. I mean, this is melodic death, melodic death metal. There's, there's no doubt about it. There's no way around it. Uh, but you know, they feature in their in their band um, the guy who used to drum for Swallow the Sun, uh, Pasi Pasinen, and they're just doing really great work. It's the only problem with the album, which I've you know gotten over since listening to it so many times, is the first two tracks kind of. I don't know how to put it other than say they, they back themselves into a corner where it's like they pigeonhole themselves, you think you know exactly what you're going to get, and then all of a sudden they just bust out and punch you in the face. And luckily they do that you know early and they manage to keep the momentum going throughout the entire album. Uh, so the self-titled album by Sons of Aeon is uh, coming in at number nine. Uh, number eight, and this one feels really good to say, I, you know, I, I loved the album. Uh, when I reviewed it, and it was the second album I reviewed this calendar year, and the first official 2013 release that I reviewed, and I have not gotten off of it yet, uh, which says a lot. So we're talking from January till July, and I have not probably gone more than a day or two without listening to it in some part. Uh, the latest album from Appalachian Winter and Dan Klein, uh, the album is called Ghosts of the Mountains, and this was... I mean, as of right now, this is the crowning achievement of Dan's career. Uh, he did amazing things here. He absolutely blew this one out of the fucking water. The production work is tight. Uh, the melodic parts are amazing. And obviously, he's always got that bevy of instruments. And what makes his work worth hearing and worth hearing time and time again is the fact that he's diverse. You know, he has the entire song where it's, it's you know, this, this weird instrumental and he's just speaking over it in this haunting voice and it, it's amazing that he brings his story to life with every song and I mean there are songs on here that would stand up to any major band that's you know that's out there right now and the way he combines you know black metal and folk metal and, and everything else he has it all in there and the key here and you know I know he he uh, might not agree he's very hard on himself but he absolutely knocked the vocals out of the park this time 
and that says a lot. I know, you know, he, he takes pride in his work, and he damn well should. And that is why Appalachian Winter, Ghost of the Mountains, comes in at number eight uh, this year for the first half. Uh, now, we had um, an interesting album coming in at number seven, a band that I had never heard of, uh, relatively new, but Season of Mist, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite labels actually found them. It's a band called Ancients with two eyes in there and their album Heart of Oak uh, is an, a fucking revelation for me. It, if I had to, if you put me, you know, pin me to the ground and said, motherfucker, pick one band that this band reminds you of. I don't think I could pick one off the top of my head, but their structuring reminds me of Opeth in the sense that they go from these like really harsh passages into, you know, very clean uh, pastoral guitars and you know there's there's a lot going on at all times but by no means is it overcrowded or contrived they just do a fantastic job uh, constructing uh, the album as it flows from one part to the next um, so I mean this album is you should definitely check it out I think you will definitely enjoy it uh, I mean if you're into any sort of like bizarre extreme but avant metal styles I mean if you're a fan of of Opeth, or if you're a fan of a lot of the bands we talk about on the site, then I, I think you should uh, you should definitely give this one a listen because you will probably absolutely fucking love the album. Uh, so that uh, will come in at number seven. Will be Ancients, Heart of Oak, uh, rounding out the top five, uh, the bottom five, excuse me. At number six is an album that I didn't expect to like at all. I actually was uh, very dismissive of this band in the past. Uh, we saw them live opening for Opeth and Mastodon, and it was at that moment that Ghost kind of got into my periphery. Uh, I didn't love their first album, but I love their live show. I love the theatrics. I love the, the way that they conduct themselves, and the entire theatrical element where they're costumed, and, and all of the band members, the nameless ghouls, I and mean, you don't really know who they are. And, and it, it's, just, it's a great setup, very creative in that way. Uh, but the music never clicked for me. Now, with this new album, which is called Infantissimum, uh, now the music makes sense. It all clicks, and I, and I, I fucking love this album because of the, the weird contrast they created on it. I mean, this is there are songs that are like love rock. There are songs that you, know, you could think might be uh, Beatles B-sides. There's just a lot going on, and with the exception of the mastering job, which... Uh, definitely gave me a headache from time to time. You know, the levels are a little a little funky. Uh, with the exception of that, the album is damn near perfect. And you, if you take a song like uh, Goulet, Zombie Queen, you could play that on repeat for hours and not get tired of it because there's so much going on in there. Uh, I mean, you just take the organs alone. The organs alone are worth you know, a fucking infinite amount of listens. And I, I, I love the way they incorporated that into their sound, you know, kind of going along with that whole evil Pope theme. Uh, but definitely give this album a listen, even if you're not a fan of the band, if you think they're fucking nut jobs, which they are, uh, based on the fact that they released a box set with a, a solid bronze dildo and a, or excuse me, a solid bronze butt plug and a dildo in the shape of the front man, Papa Emeritus. Uh, so yes, they're a little fucked up, but if you take them at face value, you listen to the music, you're absolutely gonna love this album because it's just... I mean, just ending with Monstrance Clock is, is enough. That song is a fucking blast. So definitely give a listen. Uh, number six on the countdown here is the new Ghost album, Infetissimum. And that takes care of the bottom five. Now, as for the top five, these were even more agonizing to pick uh, than the bottom five, and those were hard enough for me. Uh, it's really hard to narrow down everything you know, you've been listening to and, and everything that you've really been stuck on for the year and because you're never going to do everyone justice even when you want to. Uh, so number five for me, which I was actually surprised not to find it on Brian's list, but um, I was absolutely fucking enthralled with the new album by Glory Hammer, uh, which as most of you know, uh, it's the uh, guy from Ailstorm, Christopher Bowes, his side project. And I think everybody thought that this album was going to be a joke. Uh, the album is called Tales from the Kingdom of Fife, and I think everyone just thought it was going to be a fucking little little diddle on the side, and oh well, it's a fucking joke, nobody cares. But this is a fucking great album. 
It really is. And, you know, yeah, some of the, the lyric-wise, it's a little cheesy, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's up-tempo, it's upbeat, it's well-paced, and the musicianship is fucking great. There is nothing wrong with this album. There is nothing. And, you know, Brian, I know, compared to saying it was uh, one of the best side projects since Avantasia, I absolutely agree. And I don't think that this album got enough recognition because, you know, again, people dismissed it. But if you sit down and really listen to this album, it is, I guess, for me, it's probably my one of my favorite power metal albums of the year, definitely, and one of my favorite power metal albums in a very long time. I found myself stuck on it for quite a while. So definitely give a listen to the new Glory Hammer album, Tales from the Kingdom of Fife. Take the lyrics with a grain of salt and just enjoy the ride, man, because you're, you're absolutely going to fucking love it. Uh, so that was number five. Now, number four is an album that was released right before uh, the end of this first half, and it was an album that I was waiting for uh, with bated breath and was not disappointed in the least. Uh, those of you, you know, who have been listening to the podcast or following the site know how big a fan we all have been of Orphaned Land. And, you know, they are Israel's biggest metal export, and it's like they never, they never mess up. And it's the same thing here. The new album is called All Is One. And right from, if you just stopped right there and, you know, listened, the name of the album, All Is One, it's got that central theme of unity. And I, I, I love that they have a message to their music. And the message is not, you know, kill people. The message is not, fuck, I'm so sad. It, it's, it's biblical without being overbearing. And it, it just has so much going on. And one of the things that I noted in the review that I think people kind of forget about when you're listening to music is to some degree every album that you like you have some sort of emotional investment in whether the album makes you feel good it makes you feel angry it you know gets you psyched up for a game or whatever you have some sort of emotional investment and all is one really took that to another level you know the middle eastern influences are fantastic you know to the point where a lot of people uh friends of the site who aren't into heavy music in any way listen to this album and just were amazed with how seamlessly everything is incorporated. So, I mean, I I don't know that this album tops uh, Never Ending Way of Or Warrior, but it's close, if not tied, for me at least. And uh, there was just so much going on, so much to, to enjoy. And one of the things that I think it has over the previous album is that it's, it's a bit shorter. It's like quite a bit shorter. So there's no time for lag, there's no time for, for filler, and that's easily what puts this album at number four for me for the year. And again, this came out only, you know, a week before the end of the year, so that says a lot with... I've probably listened to it all the way through 30 times in that span, whether it be in the car, at work, in the office, and, and it does not... It absolutely does not fade for me. The album is fucking fantastic. So check out Orphan Lands All as One, which came in at number four. Now, the one at number three uh, is absolutely going to be an album that I will hold on to for a very long time. Uh, it is the latest album by the band Fister, and you know, for those of you who don't know, we've we've been following this band and been fans of this band for almost the entire length of the site. Uh, they've put out EPs that have been fucking fantastic, and now this full length, which is called Gemini, is their best work to date, without a doubt. Not even close. They they absolutely took it to the next level here. Um, they embody a lot of what doom music should be and a lot of times gets left out. I mean, everyone's kind of experimenting and going off in different directions, which is fine, but Fister to me kind of embodies this this classic doom feel. Like, when I think doom metal, Fister is one of the bands that comes to mind because they just have that, like, heavy, slow plotting, and it's scary. The music is scary. That's, that's the best thing I can do. I don't know that I've heard a song that I was as, you know, as... I don't even know what what word to use, but uh, the track three uh, is is a, a fucking mind fuck, and it's it's fucking. <laughs> you know, when I heard it the first time, it was great, but the fact that it's followed so closely by the song Gemini, the title track, which is a fucking soundtrack for a horror movie, if I've ever heard one. You know, I'm no film director, I'm, I'm no movie expert, but that song, the song Gemini, made me want to write a short film just with that as the soundtrack, because it's just the, between the strings, the, the lightly plucked guitars, the piano, and then the screaming and distortion, it's, it's, oh man, the contrast is incredible, 
and that alone you know makes this album worth a listen so i suggest you know you get on their bandcamp site fister.bandcamp.com listen to the album you know this might not be a band you're familiar with but at this point now you should be so they come in at number three now we're down to the top two and the top two were both bands uh, one a band i'd never heard of and one a band that i never really gave as much credit to as now i see they deserve uh, number two was the new album ocean of opportunity from pelic uh pelic is a i mean he's a baby-faced singer i'll say that he he looks even younger than he actually is uh he's also the front man of the band damnation angels but he puts together this band and this is power metal at its best in the almost Broadway show tunes kind of way, and there is not a damn thing on this album that I can pick out that I didn't like. Every song is perfectly played, the instrumentals are incredible, drums are booming, the guitar work is absolutely fucking sublime, and his vocals are just never wavering. They are all over everything. You cannot, you know, you cannot find fault in anything that he's doing. I mean, if you're a fan of power metal, you're a fan of, you know, uh, symphonic metal, you're a fan of progressive power metal, you put any of those in there. If you like soaring vocals, Pelic and Ocean of Opportunity is an album that you absolutely need to hear. And I had never heard of Pelic before. I'd never heard anything he's done. And now I've, I've looked through his back catalog and it's all pretty fucking amazing. But this new album is absolutely incredible. And I'm, I'm glad that I stumbled on this, and I, I've listened to this album a lot as well, which, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the, this top ten list isn't just about, you know, the scores they got in reviews, because albums grow over time. You know, reviews are kind of, you know, if we listen to the album five, six, ten times and then write a review, you know, things can change after that. And this album, I gave a ten out of ten, and I firmly believe it deserves every fraction of a point in that, because the album is just incredible. So definitely check out Pellick's Ocean of Opportunity because uh, it is going to be an album that's going to last for a long time. Uh, now we're down to number one. And number one really didn't take much thought at all. I mean, it was close between you know, Pellick and Fister and, and a, lot, all, a lot of these you know, albums could easily have jumped up or down a couple spots. And there were albums that didn't make it that I wish had, which I'll get into in a minute. But uh, the number one album didn't take much thought when it came down to it. Uh, the new album by Omnium Gatherum. The name of the album is Beyond. And some of you who you know follow the site closely, I, I posted on the Facebook when I got around to this album that I couldn't think of a better melodic death album that I've heard in the last 10 years, honestly. This album is incredible because it takes melodic death with a strong keyboard presence. Uh, the synthesizers alone elevate the album. Every song is amazing and the best part is every time you listen to it you like a song more than you did before and like oh this one's my favorite nope now it's this one and i think that's fucking incredible to achieve that and i remember looking at their facebook page right around the time the album came out and everyone's announcing oh my god this is my favorite song and you know oh, no who who could say is my favorite song no it's gonna be it's gonna be you know living in me is my favorite song no 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 there is no way to pick one but if you're only going to listen to one song, White Palace is the song to listen to. It's the last track, it's 10 minutes long, and it is absolutely fucking incredible. This is Melodic Death done perfectly, and as I mentioned before, this is a band that I, I've always liked, but I've never given them a lot of credit. You know, I never said, oh, Omnium Gather them, they're you know, the fucking kings, but after this album, I can't think of another band that can touch what they're doing. They executed everything to a T. And it is absolutely, absolutely fucking lutely unreal the way this album came out. And I know a lot of people uh, agreed with me on this one. I got a lot of you know emails and messages on Facebook saying that you know they hadn't really heard this band and now it's one of their favorite bands. And I've listened to this one again at least twenty or thirty times. It's it's just been a fucking amazing evol uh, evolution uh, to get to this point. I. I I, I can't even I can't even describe it to you. I mean, if you've liked them before, if you like their old albums, I know New World Shadows seems to be one that people point out a lot. This blows that away. There's no comparison. Uh, and that's why Omnium Gatherums Beyond uh, will be my number one album of the first half of the year. Uh, looking over to Brian's list, as I said, we don't share any in common, uh, but he ended up with you know a, a pretty good-looking list. Uh, a Day, Tyranny of Hours, Heaven Shall Burn, Dark Moor, 
Shade Empire, Avantasia, Kalma, Heimdall, Serenia, and at number one, Dark Tranquility, which was an album that I fucking loved. It just didn't quite sneak into my top ten. Uh, one that I did want to mention that you know, I, I kind of had it on my top ten and took it off was the uh, Bruce Sword album with Jonas Rensk uh, of Catatonia, The Wisdom of Crowds. Uh, it, it's, it's a great album. I, I reviewed it very fondly. And I listen to it a lot, but I, I don't know that it embodies you know all the, the the metal aspect of this site. So I didn't want to include it and bump someone off for it. Uh, but you know, Bruce Sword with Jonas Rents is definitely uh, that's a, a, an album and a collaboration that you should check out. Uh, so that's it. There's the top ten albums of the year. Uh, hoping to know what you guys think. Let me know what your top ten albums are. Maybe I missed something. Maybe maybe I hope that I you know got you onto something that maybe you didn't uh, listen to before. But there you go. Next week, we're going to have the top 10 EPs of the year. Uh, I don't have a list from Brian on that. I know Brian's not a big EP guy, but uh, I, I am. So I got another list for you. And then I think we're going to narrow down some of the top 10 new artists of the year. And I know Brian is uh, going to be in on that when the time comes. So, you know, guys, there you go. Half of the year over, half to go. I'm always curious to see where these first half albums rank come the end of the year. And I guess we'll see. But until then, guys, keep listening to all this great stuff and stay tuned for next week. More top 10 lists probably for the rest of the month because they're easy and fun and everyone gets mad. <laughs> See you guys next week.